So good afternoon. Uh, in the last period, we were just to solve the problem on a frame uh, and to understand uh, how do you solve a frame, uh, complete frame, uh, joint reactions by using method of members. Of course, we have taken a simplest case, uh, class one frame, it, which is uh, uh, rigid and deterministic frame. Why it was rigid and deterministic frame? When supports were removed, you see that uh, the configuration or the shape of the frame does not change. And uh, uh, that is why uh, it was rigid. And why it was statically determinate? We were able to solve in the previous problem, uh, uh, which is uh, now existing in this case. See uh, the AX, AY and BX value we were able to solve uh, by drawing the entire frame free body diagram. So this is the case that we have solved in this previous period. <coughs> So we are going to continue with an another class of frame and to apply this method and solve. So let me have a new uh, chart for that. And uh, this is lecture number. Nineteen. And again date twenty two three. 2021. <laughs> uh, we will solve an another class of frame problem, right? So let's take uh, this frame. I will draw now this configuration. Just give me a minute. Let's consider, let me take this frame. So look at this frame that uh, essentially. So can you just find out which class uh, this frame belongs to? So how many members that forms this frame? Can you describe this class? Anyone? Or let me ask someone. Right. Are you able to see this shared screen? Uh, this problem? Anybody is unable to uh, see? Please tell me. Are you able to see the screen? Rudranath? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's so you are able sir. to look at the frame problem. So can you describe this frame problem and find out which class or what? How do you classify the frame that is shown on this uh, picture? What class of frame is this? You understand what I mean by class of frame? So look at this lecture here. We had four classification. Right out of this one, two, three, four, what is that class it is belonging to? Hmm? What is the class it is belonging to? So how do you how do you find out that first look at how many members forming the frame here you have member a b c and the b d only two members and then uh, the support at point c support at point d both are hinge supports so if i remove the support at c and d what would happen i would have two members and the integrity of the shape or the orientation of b d with respect to a, B, C will not be maintained. So this become non rigid. Right, but when they provide support, this is a frame. That could carry this load. Right, 
So this is non-rigid. And you see again, if I remove these two supports, I would have uh, this, uh, the support reactions. So let me assume that is Cx, Cy. And at this point, let me assume, unknowns I always consider positive direction, dx and dy. I consider like this. So I have four unknowns. So with the three equation, I cannot solve these four unknowns uh, from the entire frame free body diagram. So now what is there appearing with this uh, reaction components mentioned at C and D is the entire frame free body diagram. This is entire frame free body diagram. Right? So you are not able to find Cx. See, you can take moment at point C, I would get dy. Again, I can take moment at point D, I would get Cy. But when I apply sigma fx equal to 0, I will get the Cx equal to minus dx. But I do not know what is its magnitude. And when I apply sigma fy equal to 0, I will have Cx, Cy plus dy uh, equals uh, this 400 Newton. So I have now three equations, but two equations and three unknowns I cannot solve. So it is going to be statically indeterminate. In determinate. So what problem is this class four according to the classification that we looked at on the first lecture of this phase. So now I can solve this. So what is that question is find the support reactions also find the reactions at point B. So how do I go about solving? First, let me take this entire free body diagram and apply uh, condition of equilibrium at point C and find out dy. Advantage is Cx and dy is collinear. So dy can be found out. So let me just to find dy by taking moment about point C with this convention. So dy would create what moment at point C? dy is upward considered, so the momentum is 240 mm and that would create counterclockwise momentum with respect to moment center point C. So dy into 240 mm is positive. And um, here 400 Newton acting down and the distance from C, horizontal distance is 135 mm and um, moment center is C and uh, this would create again counterclockwise moment. So plus 400 into 135 that's equal to 0. So I get dy equals minus 400 into 135 by 240. So my answer would be 400 into 135 divided by 240 that's going to be 225. So minus 225 Newton. So I get minus sign. See again carefully. Uh, see here, uh, you have just asked in the previous class. Uh, so the minus sign, if you get while solving, what to do? So minus sign says, what is the direction considered that has to be reversed? So dy is considered upward, that should be actually downward. dy is going to be 225 Newton down in the free body diagram considered. So here it is, I don't change the direction, rather I'll put minus 225 here in this diagram. But when I have to dismember and I solve, I'll take correct one, correct? That's what you have to see. So now uh, to get my uh, Cy, what I can do, I can apply sigma Fy equal to 0 and find Cy. Equal to 0, I would get Cy CY. So Cy upward plus dy, but I have here minus value, so minus 225, and this 400 down, so minus 400. Uh, there is no other vertical force that's equal to zero. So I get cy equals 625 Newton. That's positive, so the direction assumed is correct. That is upward. So these two sum would be equal to 400, what is external load, right? So I have got now cy. Now, how do I get Cx and Dx if I apply now sigma Fx 
equal to 0, considering this is positive to the right, I get a Cx plus Dx equal 0. So I have only relation Cx should be minus Dx, but I do not know the magnitude. So this equation, three equations are necessary equation for equilibrium, but they are not sufficient to find out the magnitude of Cx and Dx now. So I require some additional equations. So those equations can be obtained by disnumbering. So since I am not able to find out this from the entire free body diagram of the frame, I uh, classify this frame as statically indeterminate frame. But it is become determinate by doing dismembering, I would get an additional equation to solve, right? That's one understanding. And then now, uh, how do I go about doing it? In that process, uh, I would also be able to find out the reaction at point B. So I can draw now the free body diagram of CBA and BD. So BD, I do not have an external load. So what I can do, I can consider this orientation. That's an advantage. When I, uh, before proceeding itself, if I consider that uh, this member is not having any external load and this should be of two force member, I know the direction of this dx dy, then it becomes only one unknown. So taking moment about this, I would have my dx and then I can do it. So without dismembering, I can do that. Now. That's an uh, uh, interesting point. Why that is interesting point? Because I know that uh, BD is two force member. There is no external force. Whereas ABC is multi force member because at point A, I have a vertical load in lateral direction, in transverse direction, right? So that's an understanding of two force member. So if I have that, what I can do, my uh, um, um, reaction at point D can be composed. Reaction at point D can be composed. So I know now this is composed and that should be collinear along with this. So dy I had got the downward direction. So in my free body diagram, this direction should be Change. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to redraw this, I'll eliminate, remove this all, and I'll take it for convenience. Sir, As but what is the use? Sir, what is the use of composition when we don't even know what dx is? Yeah, why you know one component and you know the orientation? Because I know D, db member is two force member, so I know the direction. So if I know the direction, I can find out what is my dx because i have got dy right so dy is minus so see you know you would uh, understand that so dy is in this direction dx is this right dx i consider uh, 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 sorry dx is this i'm sorry just a minute take this uh, uh, dx I have to find out, dx I have to find out. Uh, since, uh, uh, yeah, and dy I have got down now, right? And see, uh, the direction of dx also is dictated now. So if I take dx like this, I get my composition in this, which is not an uh, axial member in this. The direction of reaction at d or reaction at b is dictated now. So that is uh, along the axial direction of this member. So I should have my dx drawn in this way. See, this is what is your understanding of the concept. If we apply them, it has become very simple, right? So the direction of dx is dictated now, that is to be in this direction, dx. And uh, dy should be in this direction. So if I compose these two, what is that I get as RD. What is that I get is RD in this direction. So I know this orientation theta D. That's all. So if I have drawn this now, if I have drawn this now, I can find what is DX, right? So what is dx I can find? dy I know. So dy is what is uh, dy is what is uh, found to be 225. And dx I did not know. I know this direction now. So what is direction theta d? 
direction theta d opposite by adjacent. So opposite side is 450. So tan inverse of 450 by 240. So what is that I have? 450 divided by 240 shifted tan inverse. So 61.93 degrees. That's equal to 61.93 degrees. So this orientation of member DB to horizontal is 61.93 degrees. So knowing that, I can find out now what is my DX, right? What is my DX? Yes or no? So what is DX? RD cos theta D is what is DX. So DX is RD cos theta D. Right? Uh, are you able to? RD cos theta X. And what is the RD? What is RD? RD sine, uh, I, I have got a theta y, so, sorry, I have got dy, I have got dy, so dy is what, RD sine theta d, dy is RD sine theta d, right, so I know dy is RD sine theta d, so RD would be dy that's 225 by sine theta d that's sine 61.93 degrees so i would have my rd so 225 divided by sine 61.93 that's equal to 255 255 newton so when it is 255 newton i can find what is my dx so 255 cos 61.93. So I would have this now oh, into cos 61.93. That's equal to 120. 120 newton. That's my dx. And uh, that direction is positive uh, value again. So the direction to the left is correct. And now the reaction is uh, at point D on member uh, D, right? Uh, sorry, BD. So if I dismember BD, I have my member BD. So this is D and this is B. And this orientation to the vertical is 61.93, just now you have got. So now, uh, in this member, what would be my uh, uh, reaction? That's what you have got it now. So the reaction at point D uh, would be in this direction, right? This direction. RD, which is equal to? 255 Newton. So the free body diagram of BD to be under equilibrium, I should have here also the same magnitude and opposite direction, my RD. So that's equal to 255 Newton. So this member has got its reaction as compression. So that member is actually experiencing the pull. That's the meaning, right? So you are having now uh, determined uh, RD. See now, uh, you, you may say that I could find out uh, the reactions now at point C as well as as point D uh, without dismembering. You may say it is not so. You have dismembered implicitly. How applying the concept of two force member? So when I draw the free body diagram of this two force member, that dictate the direction of this, and that understanding is what I apply here, and that is all for dx. So if I solve for dx and that same uh, magnitude is for uh, cx as well, right? So what is the magnitude of cx now from this equation I can get. So therefore cx 
would be minus of uh, see this direction uh, this this equation i have written when dx also i have taken and the uh, in the positive to the right direction but now dx is to the left taken so cx minus dx equal to 0 so cx equal to dx so my cx value is same as that of 120 you done to the right so i have cx i have cy so i can find what is rc so rc would be uh, under root of 120 square plus 625 square so i would have this value 120 square plus 625 square within radical answer 636.42 newton and its direction now i have uh, cy upward cx to the right so the direction would be in, in this direction so that's my c theta so what is my uh, c theta value now uh, or theta c theta subscript c so theta c would be tan inverse of 625 by 120 i will have 625 divided by 120 shift tan inverse and 79.13 79.13 degrees so that's the direction of the action at point c so here the reaction direction is this. If I compose the Cy value is 400 plus this has come 625. So Cy magnitude would be slightly more. So this, this is Cy. And if I compose this too, I would have Rc. So RC reaction is this to the horizontal direction, whereas RD reaction is this. And you see the magnitude of RD is not same as RC. That's very important. So RC magnitude is uh, found out to be 636.42, whereas RD magnitude is 255. 255. So they are not uh, forming the couple, right? But uh, these are the reactions uh, in the uh, entire frame free body diagram in RC and DE. Is it clear? Is it clear? So now how do you find out reaction at B? Reaction at B. For that I should draw a free body diagram of C, A, B, C. So let us draw a free body diagram of ABC. So what is the dimension of ABC? Uh, 450 plus 120 and uh, horizontal distance from C to A is 135. So let me just draw that free body diagram. So I have this point is a, A, B, C. So this is A, this is B. And this point is C. What are their dimensions? The dimensions are 450, 120 and 135. So this distance is 135. And this distance is 450 m and this distance is 120 m right it's given 120 m and um, what is the other free body diagram is member b d b Under BD. 
So now um, I have my Cx and Cy known here. So let me draw the reactions here. Uh, Cy 625, Cx 120. And uh, here at point A I have external load of 400 Newton. And Bx and By I do not know, but I can consider now the direction of uh, BD that is known here, uh, 255. So I should have in the other direction here, right? The same here. So that's understood. So this is Y, uh, RB. So that's going to be 255 Newton. So whatever this orientation that you have, that is, uh, what is this angle? 61.93 degrees. The same here. To the horizontal, I'm sorry, to the horizontal. 61.93 degrees, the same magnitude. So I don't need to, it's already solved. Whatever is there here, the same here. So I had here uh, is this direction, 255, and here this is 255. So I would have this answer. So that's how you can solve. Any doubts? Any doubt that you have? So don't, don't you want to want to take the uh, rotational motion at B due to the hinge? Uh, rotation motion at D due to B B at B. There's an internal hinge over there. Right? It's a pin. They are connected by this member. Both are connected by pin. So the reaction components are B X and B Y. But the B X and B Y, if I compose, I would get a result done which should be same as that of uh, what is the reaction in member uh, B D. The point B in member BD, that's already found out here, 255. So it should be opposite direction. When I connect them, I should have my uh, free body diagram of time. So now, for example, assume that I have a hinge here, right? I have a hinge here, I have a hinge here, D. So if I put the hinge, this will be disappearing. That's what first we have found out. And then if I connect this point B and B, this will disappear. So I'll have my configuration back. So okay. why do you have to take a moment here? That's not needed. You, you solve the problem simply. So though this problem class is appearing to be non-rigid, statically indeterminate, but this problem is very conceptual problem which makes your understanding better. Because when you look at this, point C and D, two hinges. So when you have two hinges, by default, you look at two unknown components for one hinge and two unknown component reaction for other hinge. When you draw the entire frame free body diagram. So four unknowns are there. So immediately that comes in your mind that uh, we have only three equations. So solving for four unknowns, it is statically indeterminate. That's absolutely correct. So you have to go for dismembering. So when I dismember, I understand this member BD is a two force member. Because there is no other force at, uh, uh, in the member acting. So uh, since it is a two force member, the reaction direction of uh, dx and dy should be collinear. So that helped me, that understanding helped me. That understanding comes from where dismembering this and then looking at it. So since that is understood, in this free body diagram itself, I have taken the directions like this, dx and dy like this, so that I was able to solve for dx, dy from the entire frame free body diagram itself. Instead of having dx, dy, I had only rd and its direction. So uh, four unknowns become three unknowns. So Cx, Cy, and uh, here it is Rd alone. It's magnitude alone because I know the direction. So that is that understanding. So this problem all are the competitive exam problem. You would see such problems in an interview or in gate examination. If you are good at uh, you know, starting it with the problem solving. If you do not click that and you are keep uh, drawing the free body diagram, if you make one mistake here and there, uh, then a simple problem uh, will not be solvable and then you get uh, triviality. Uh, you do not know what's happening. So that is uh, not recommended. So you should uh, look at and observe and apply your understanding better. So that is what is this. So what is the first step in frames? 
analysis, you should look for two force member is that it is existing. A frame does not require all the members should be multi force member. You should have at least one member to be a multi force member, and uh, you should have uh, two force member also can be present. All members also can be a multi force member. It depends, but uh, you can solve them uh, uh, by applying condition of equilibrium either to an entire frame or uh, individual member of free body diagram, and you will be able to solve. So whenever you are given a frame, you should uh, draw entire frame free body diagram. As well as you should dismember and solve individual member free body diagram also. That practice is important. If you are drawing them correctly, those free body diagram, then uh, applying the condition of equilibrium become easier and you would be solving without any mistake. Right? Is it clear? Is it clear? Any doubts? If you do not have any doubt, I would stop with this problem, uh, this lecture. And uh, I would uh, um, recommend that you solve for other two cases. That is rigid statically indeterminate, non-rigid statically determinate classes uh, from the textbook some problem so that you have covered all of them. So uh, now uh, module uh, two was over by this today's lecture. Uh, so module one you learned the basics of statics uh, where you have understood uh, various system of uh, forces and how to find out the resultant. You are able to understand the fundamental concepts and fundamental principles. You know what you mean by static equilibrium, when to apply Lamy's theorem, um, um, and so on. So you are able to look at forces in space and replace them by a single force result and by applying uh, vector algebra. So you represent all the force vector as a Cartesian vector and add them. So addition of vectors are simply resultant if the system is concurrent. If they are not concurrent, parallel or space force system, then you have to apply varying non principle. You also understood that can be reduced to a range. So importantly, in static equilibrium, you have learned uh, um, one thing is uh, free body diagram concept. So you should differentiate what is free body diagram from the configuration diagram. So you have done so much of playing around with the basics of statics. And uh, important point in that is equal and force couple system. That's essentially has made you to find the uh, wrench uh, concept uh, or wrench as a resultant for a space force system, which is general space force system. So equivalent force couple system is very, very important concept that you should understand. And uh, this is all what we have done in module one as a basics of statics. Then uh, uh, we have uh, uh, marched into module two, where we have done uh, uh, analysis of trusses and frames. Uh, so now we are about to start with the module three, wherein we will solve equilibrium problems, uh, specifically on wedges and the ladder friction problems. Accounting the contact surface is rough surface. So the reaction, whatever you get, uh, would have a friction component. Friction, uh, one of the components is friction, which is tangential to the contact, and that is always uh, opposing the expected uh, motion, right? Uh, relative motion. So we are going to look at dry friction, uh, that is coulomb friction. How, what is the law of friction? What do you mean by angle of repose? Uh, how do you define friction angle? There are so many uh, interesting uh, definition terminologies in accounting uh, coulomb friction uh, uh, into our equilibrium problems. So that is uh, all our uh, in the module three that I am going to start with this Wednesday class. Maybe uh, two to three lectures sufficient for that topic, which is a small topic. Then we will get into uh, virtual principle. Uh, before that, we have an intermediate topic called the section properties, very, very important, and that is the length here. Uh, so, uh, we will try to cover or end the full statics portion before your CAT 2. That's a plan of action for forthcoming classes. So, with that note, let me stop today's class lecturing and stop recording if you do not have any doubts. Do you have any doubts? If you do not have any doubts, you may leave for the next lecture. I have downloaded your attendance. Yeah. Any doubts? Downloaded attendance. I will stop recording.